I'm Gail Brewer, Manhattan Borough President, and welcome to Represent NYC of Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Our topic on this edition of Represent NYC is the new dot level, dot NYC top level web domain, which I had a large part of getting created beginning on the City Council when I was a member of the City Council. On this program, we'll discuss how people, organizations, or businesses can register for a dot NYC web address and why they should. Our guests are very special today. Betsy Wilbur Polive, who is the proprietor of Manhattan Sideways, a website devoted to identifying and promoting the great New York City businesses that are located on Manhattan side streets and that is a member of the Dot NYC Founders Program, which are the early adopters of Dot NYC domains, and she'll tell us all about it. Ken Libere, a restaurateur whose family owns the very great Russian Tea Room, which is also a part of the Dot NYC Founders Program, and he's also a member of Community Board Number no. Seven. And Anna Guzman, a business development manager at New Star Inc., which is the official registry operator for Dot NYC. They operate the technical infrastructure of the Dot NYC top-level domain, and they handle all the marketing as well. I've heard her speak, and she does a great job. So we'd love to start with you, Anna, and just talk a little bit, because I think a lot of participants in this very exciting uh, endeavor really don't know what it is, and people are dying to know. So tell us a little bit about what New Star is doing, how the program works, and what Dot NYC is all about. Sure. So New Star is the official registry operator of the top-level domain, so we handle all the technical back-end and all the marketing. Um, but dot NYC is a web address for New York City. So you can think of it as a dot com or a dot net or a dot gov. But it's dot NYC and it's only for, you know, residents, individuals, organizations with a physical address in one of the five boroughs. And, and we're excited about that part because I know when the legislation actually passed, we made sure it was included. And I think other cities don't necessarily have that uh, text. So we're delighted. And we'd like to know how does that, how do you, how do you make sure somebody lives, works, or has a business in the city of New York? So, um, so New Star doesn't sell the domains directly, but when you go to one of the retailers, which we can talk about um, as well, and you're going to have to enter your address, and they'll verify it. So there are systems in the back end that are verifying that you, in fact, have a real address Fabulous. in one of the boroughs. Go ahead. Sorry to interrupt, but I love that part. Oh, no. It's OK. I know, but I was going to say this. I mean, this project has been in the works for a long time. I mean, you know very well. and. I just wanted to get your take on this. I mean, it was extraordinarily visionary of you to have started this back in 2008. Can you tell us about that experience? Sure. Tom Lonehout, who is a community board member then of District 3 in Queens, similar to what Ken is here in Manhattan, and he realized that this was happening in other cities around the world, Paris, Berlin, mm -hmm. and so on. And I was chair of the technology committee in the city council. And he came to me and said, we have to do this because we don't want ICANN, and you can talk about this yeah. large international body that nobody really knows what it is. Um, <laughs> and they decide, but they assigned the domains. And so we had uh, pushed at that point, this is the mid 2000s, uh, late 2000s, to get New York City to buy into it. And that's how it got started, was basically a resolution in support of New York City making this step. Uh, that must have been an incredible experience. And um, for all of those of you that don't know, the internet itself is undergoing a huge change, actually the biggest expansion to date. Um, I can, like Gail mentioned, the governs, sort of governs the internet. And a few it's years an back... For, I don't know what. International... It's, um, it's, long, it's, yeah. it's an acronym basically for the folks that do the domain selections. Yeah, but they opened up the space and so different um, entities could apply for domains that they wanted and through this very long complicated application process um, they were able to submit applications and then you know these domains have been assigned and they're finally coming to market. But what's particularly interesting is that a few cities applied for domains including New York and so now we have .NYC which is a huge benefit to all the residents of the city. So. So Ken, why don't you talk about, like, you really are a, you're the first person who told me, I remember I got this email, Gail, we're at .NYC at the Russian Tea Room. So tell me how you went about it, what you think the advantages are, sure. et cetera. Well, we wanted to jump at the opportunity. We've been tracking uh, your work and the city's effort to, to get this launched. And when that trial period began for trademark affiliated entities, we just jumped on it. We had our lawyers, we submitted everything. Uh, previously, our website was RussianTeaRoomNYC.com. And I think so many businesses in New York appreciate and want to, you know, broadcast that we're in New York City. 
So we, you know, often add NYC to so many different restaurants and different uh, entities. So to be able now to just put dot NYC, it's a, a real uh, a stamp of pride. So the Russian Tea Room is is one of the most famous restaurants in the world, yeah. and it, it is that famous. I think because we're in New York City, we're right in the middle on 57th Street. So for us, it was uh, we didn't walk, we ran at the opportunity to do it. So we want to thank you for for doing that. Well, it's many people yeah. involved, and I can whatever they are. Yeah, yeah. I can whatever they are. Um, but it was also the people from Do It and city staff who made the application, and it wasn't easy, yeah. and it was very complicated. Yeah. So you're really, you're, I call, when we were at an event recently at the Flatiron Business Improvement District, um, we saw some of the, you talked a little bit about your work, but it's so exciting, both as a founder, right, and as a company. So why don't you talk about the founder process, which is not so easy, and just what you're doing to, you know, as a business, it's phenomenal, so exciting. Um, somebody actually from New Star approached me. He had heard about me through one of the chambers in Manhattan and knew about my work and he contacted me and he asked if I would be interested and we met and he explained it all to me and I'm not that tech savvy <laughs> but I went home and discussed it with my team and everyone said yes this sounds wonderful and to me it's the perfect marriage because Manhattan Sideways is dedicated to promoting the side street businesses, the small businesses especially of New York. Um, and that is what Dot NYC is all about, is just helping to promote Manhattan and New York and all the boroughs. And how so, do you go about promoting the side streets? What do you do to promote the side streets? So, I mean, that's part of, um, I just think it's so exciting what you're doing, so. Um, every day I'm out there, I started on First Street and I walk from the East River to the Hudson and I have already walked and biked 100 streets. Uh, my goal is to do 155, which uh, was the uh, initial Manhattan grid, was starting on First and going all the way to 155th. And 50 streets are on the site, I'm very happy to say that today. Uh, and I walk and I document every single place on every single side street. So nail and hair salons and doctor's offices, parking garages, ATM machines, gardens, churches, synagogues, hotels, restaurants, bars, I mean, you name it. Everything that's non-residential, everything that is, is historic is also on there. And then I conduct interviews with owners and people in the businesses and I do feature articles about them and there's gorgeous photography very proud of my photography team and there's over 40 videos where we do interviews That's, and you, so. i think you're sideways.nyc right that would so we changed and we are now proudly sideways.nyc That's absolutely fabulous. and i hear you stopped by the russian tea room and had a good yes <laughs> with uh, one of yeah. uh, ken's colleagues yeah so That's it, fabulous. even though i'm up to 50th street on the site i'm way ahead in my work and we got an interview with um, one of the people on his team and we took photographs and went in the kitchen and all the fun things. So Manhattan Sideways likes to get behind the scenes and to, to learn stories that you can't read um, on the internet or in the media anywhere else. So. so all of this is relevant, I think, because if we do our job well as a city and New Star, then Dot NYC will be part of all these wonderful businesses that Betsy is visiting. So tell us a little bit about the rush period and you know how it works in terms of um, you know of absolutely the logistics, right? Yeah, um, absolutely. So first of all, before I get into that, I think that it, the important thing to know is that if you're a business or um, you serve the local market, Dot NYC is probably for you because not only are you getting the opportunity to brand yourself online, but you're telling the world that you're in New York City. Um, so to get your domain. Um, the domain launched in different phases. Like Ken was saying, he was able to get his as a trademark owner very early on. But um, what's very important to know is that public registration start on October 8th, where people will be able to go on you know, to the different retailers, retailers of their choice, and register their NYC domain on a first come, first serve basis. So October 8th is the date to keep in mind. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And have you found that you've done pretty well so far in terms of um, those that have a trademark or you know fit into the period before October 8th and what do you think has you know excited people the most you know just in terms of what Newstar has learned yeah absolutely so Newstar doesn't sell the domains directly we sell them through our retailers so what we hear from our partners more and more is that Dot NYC is surpassing you know all expectations and our registration numbers are you know much higher than our peers like the other geographic 
geographic targeted domains like dot Paris and dot London and dot Berlin. Um, but what we I want to really, beat them all, <laughs> and we will. <laughs> so you know we're positioned to be very successful, and this is positioned to be a great hit. But Make sure you get yep. that name that you want. Betsy, go ahead. I had a question for you. Go ahead. Um, I was just going to say that because I'm out there every day, I've been telling everybody about it. And I have literally helped people fill out applications. And everyone who I speak to, they get it. They understand what this means. And immediately, they want to be a part of it, which is really nice. It is. And, and that's why it's great that you're a founder. Because yeah. I think there are 50 founders, right? And some of them are the business improvement districts. Some mm -hmm. of them are like... Uh, Manhattan side. Go ahead. Yeah, so the Founders Program was an initiative we launched early in the summer to select the first 50 users of the domain. And then, you know, these people like Betsy were given the opportunity to develop their sites early on, and so that we could then also create a lot of buzz and brand awareness before the public launch of the domain in, on October 8th. Um, and to answer your question earlier of what I think makes Dot NYC so special is that it truly is a benefit to the city of New York, to every resident here. It's only for you. No one else can register a .NYC. So, um, you know, with the you know other domains that are available like .Vegas and .London, anyone anywhere in the world can register them. But that's not the same for .NYC. So it's truly a benefit, and it's truly telling the world that you're local, and it's a badge of honor. Yeah, uh, Betsy. When you talk to people, are they cognizant of it? They um, want to do it. How do you? How do they react? Because what we are trying to do is exactly to have folks like the Russian Tea Room like the businesses that you're coming in contact with, those are the people we really, really want to have .NYC. So, I mean, you are the perfect founder, right? Is she the perfect founder or what? <laughs> Very sweet. Um, I think that we live in a competitive society, especially in New York. So I think people really, they understood and they said, oh, I want to be first. And uh, one of the wonderful uh, bakeries in New York that I told about it, he went on and he tried to get every single thing he could. He did bagels.nyc, <laughs> he did bread.nyc. He came back to me and said, I couldn't get all of them. He said, he has a little girl who's adorable who's two years old. He said, I put her name on there and I got her.nyc. So I love that people right. understand it. Yeah. And the crepe place that's mentioned in the Wall Street Journal, he went on right away and he, he went after creperie.nyc. So people want their whole name on there, but they also want to see if they could grab those important keywords. Keywords, yeah. thank you. Right. Yeah. Kenny, uh, yeah. the restaurant world is doing what? Go ahead, tell me what. Yeah, I think, I think people are really embracing this. Uh, the dot NYC effort is, is really like real estate now. You want to capture as much of an online presence as possible. Uh, even the Russian Tea Room, as famous as we are, we spend so much uh, time, money, and effort on our online communications and marketing and promotions. Um, the vast majority of our reservations come online. We do uh, a ton of analysis based on where we're getting hits and reservations. So for example, in the last couple of years, we've seen this massive uptick in reservations from Australia, for mm -hmm. example. So we're doing all these partnerships with Australian businesses in New York who you know, are now communicating back there and, and so on. So, you know, we're looking to capture and we're going to explore uh, responsibly developing maybe <laughs> other .NYC uh, affiliate uh, uh, tag words, whether it's Tea Room or RTR.NYC, you know, shorter, more uh, dynamic and, and fun things. So I think restaurants around the city and small businesses, especially, and I know how much you care about small businesses, so that's why I'm so excited about this panel and what you're doing, because the vast majority of side street businesses tend to be these kind of established uh, small businesses that make our city so vibrant and unique, so they're the perfect uh, group to, to be out there capturing .NYC for, for, their, uh, for their businesses. So I think you've got a great uh, advocate she's, here she's to go door to door. Founder. Yeah. I also feel very strongly, I had to make this decision when um, choosing which places I would feature. Everybody's listed, but then there are feature articles on a select few of every on every street. So we're honored. So, <laughs> well, um, does the Russian Tea Room need Manhattan Sideways? And my answer is, if I can draw attention to the Russian Tea Room, then I'm also drawing attention to the smaller businesses on 57th Street. Mm -hmm. So if I can get them to explore and go look at any place on any side street, everyone else while they're walking past is going to also. Yeah. Absolutely, it's fantastic. Yeah. Now there were, um, just as part of the operation, certain uh, names that were set aside so that they aren't, mm -hmm. you know, caught up. And you know, I think dot 
and uh, Manhattan.nyc, Bronx. Do you have some sense of what all those names are and how that process is working? Yes, definitely. So uh, there's a few names, like you mentioned, that have been held back. It's really only a fraction of all the available domains, but they were held back for different reasons. And a few of those reasons are, one, are a group of names that I can. Um, has restricted just from availability on any domain, more for policy issues. Um, another group of domains has been reserved by the city to make sure that you know key city terms, street names, you know, very important institutions uh, get their domains that the, those are properly developed. And then, you know, the last subset of names was reserved for new start to ensure proper development. You know, the domain. The most important thing for us is to make sure that. People are using and building websites that are, you know, high quality, so that it's, you know, it continues to add to the benefit of .NYC, and that's mainly the reason why these names have been held back. And I think having the founders was a great idea. The other night, I went to the 123th Street bid, the Business Improvement She's District, great. with Barbara Askins, and we stood <laughs> outside. You can't make this up. We stood outside on the avenue. Uh, sort of an outdoor cafe space. We mm -hmm. had music. She, Barbara was passing out material. People were walking by. It was an attraction, you know, of um, to the community and talking about Dot NYC. So you have to do that kind of retail work, which of course is what, as Ken knows, I love doing. But um, I think that she wouldn't have done that if she wasn't a founder. Mm -hmm. You know, so this founder program. Now, are you in touch with all the founders? Do you have any sense of what people are doing? Yes, definitely. So, like I said, the founders are the first 50 users of the domain, and they're a diverse group of individuals and organizations. So we have, you know, people from all the five boroughs, and we have people from every industry. We have tech represented, small businesses. We have, you know, agencies. We have different bids, and so and that was the whole purpose, right? To have the widest, most diverse reach, and we are in touch with all of them, um, and they're all very excited to be on .NYC, and we're also incredibly excited that they've already developed their websites. And if you go on them, um, you know, they're all high quality. They're all, you know, making sure that the word is spread and that people know about this. So um, we're very close to our founders. Now, how does it work, and others may have, in terms of the funding? Because, of course, you don't um, collect the credit card information that's done by your partners. And how does one select the partners? What partners do you find more useful? I mean, Ken can jump in, sure. Betsy jump in. Mm -hmm. This is, um, right now, as I understand it, there's a sort of competitive pricing situation, and maybe after, in the October and mm -hmm. ongoing, it might go down because it'll be sort of more uh, evened out in terms of the competition. But I'm just wondering how the partners got selected and what the cost issues are. Because this is a little controversial for some people. Yeah, definitely. So like I mentioned before, the domain has been launched in different phases. So the first phase was for trademark owners. And we're actually now in the third phase, which ends next week. But it's an early registration period called Land Rush. And this isn't something that you have to do by any means. It's just the opportunity to reserve your name at a premium. Uh, at a, a premium price. And after that, on October 8th, you're able to get your domain on a first come, first serve basis. So if you really want a specific name and you want to make sure that you get it, yes, you pay a little bit of a premium. Otherwise, you pay um, the regular fee. Um, and to answer your question about the different prices, Newstar doesn't actually sell the names. We sell them through the different retailers, which our channel team takes care of. Um, but in the same way that a car dealership sort of has different, you know, prices for cars and you shop around when you go buy a car. Mm -hmm. um, the same thing goes for domain retailers. They have different service offerings and different levels of service. And so um, as a consumer, you need to make sure that you're you know, comparison shopping because you want to make sure that the retailer you end up selecting fits your needs the uh, most. Okay. Is there so, gonna be, oh, go ahead, Ken. I was just ask, is there going to be a concern about people just trying to buy as many .NYC web domains as possible and then because doesn't that happen now where people try to then sell yeah. <laughs> dot coms and like it becomes a very so they're uh, called there's a horrible name called cyber squad yeah it's a very and bad. it is an issue and new star probably doesn't yeah. want to hear about it but it is an issue <laughs> that you know is it's yeah. part of life i think so i think yeah i think that in general that's one of the things that you need to look out for i think the nature of this industry is competitive i think that um, if you want a domain, I mean, it's like real estate, like we were saying before. And if you want, you know, a specific name, then you should register it because there it only is like one version of each name, and that's what creates this competition. So and that's why we jump on it too. I mean, mm -hmm. we had our trademark lawyers had to go through the process to help get us on the early stages because we just didn't want anybody else to even, you know, try right. that. So and how yeah. do you, your small businesses? I'm dying to hear more stories about them. <laughs> well, go ahead. I, I was just going to say that it was. Um, somebody who worked at Newstar who said to me, don't do Manhattan Sideways NYC. It's too long. It's redundant. You can get that. You can own that later. But for now, 
you can only choose one, so do sideways.nyc because that's one of those keywords that people would want and then we'll give that one to you. So now I've put in to get Manhattan Sideways and a few others, I've, you know, we'll find out if I got them, but yeah, um, yeah and as I understand it, you pay a yearly fee mm -hmm. for each one that you own. It's no different so. than any other right. domain. Yeah. I pay a yearly fee for. Exactly. I'm just helping you to explain. Yeah, to no, the it's public good. How it works. No, it's so. very true. I mean, for those of us who've done it, it's it's the same, and you know. But the excitement, I think, is the dot NYC. And I started it because I was looking for a table for my house that I wanted specifically. I see it online or some versions, but it doesn't say from where. The table is coming, and I am like a neurotic New York City shopper. <laughs> so I'm like, is this coming from Midwest or is this coming from the city of New York? You know, Brooklyn, Bronx, I don't care, Manhattan. But I, I couldn't figure it out. I mm -hmm. could not figure it out. So that's when I got, you know, spent some time looking. I heard about this, you know, new domain around the world, and I said, that's what we really need. Because then, really, those of us who are diehard New York shoppers, if we do go online, we would know if it's in New York City or not. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it makes a big difference. Exactly, and so your NYC domain tells the world you're in New York, so you know that, and, and that's something that you don't get on .com or any other domain extension for that matter. Um, so you'll know that the restaurant or the flower shop or the bike shop is in fact in New York City. And then you don't have to add NYC into your exactly. own name, it's just automatically <laughs> right. there. We heard a wonderful story yeah. also at Flatiron which, uh, at the bid, which was the gentleman had a business and the business, somewhat similar to the Russian Tea Room, had a hyphen in it. And now he's able to have the name of the business dot NYC. You have never seen an individual so ecstatic. You know, because... Dash the dash. Um, dash. Ditch the dash. dash. Ditch, ditch the dash. dash. Ditch the right, that was dash fun, right? I mean, said, yeah. That was um, really fun. Yes, and some of our founders, I can. there's different examples, but um, I think the one you're talking about was mesh-New York. Dot com and now they're mesh.nyc and then we also have this really cool agency called Plenty and their domain was plentynyc.com and now it's plenty.nyc so there's a lot of really cool opportunities as a business owner. It's like taking you back in time to like when the internet first started and you can actually start fresh and say hey I want to mm -hmm. you know get the identity that you know that I am entitled to because of my business or so on and so forth and not get into some kind of you know bidding war and you know dealing with cyber squatters and all this stuff, so. I, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I agree, and as the world comes online, you know, everything is shorter and more mobile and more social these days, and, you know, you have the opportunity that there's this whole neighborhood of, you know, digital real estate available, so make sure that you get your name and make sure that, you know, you're branding yourself throughout all these channels because uh, you have the opportunity to do that now. Basically, the small stores, when you approach them about this, um, obviously they need assistance. Sometimes they have a computer, sometimes they don't. That's my experience. I mean, I know a lot of small businesses. Um, Ken and I have a very famous, uh, in our neighborhood, quilt shop, and we had to help her, you know, get online. So how do you help them get online? I mean, it, you're supposed to be out there taking pictures and moving to the next street. and <laughs> right. I can't. I can't help but tell them about it because I just think it's so brilliant and so helpful, I believe, uh, for small businesses. I've also talked to a lot of people who don't even have a website at all yet right. and that this is their perfect opportunity to go out and have one. And then um, we might be having to help people how to make a website. Right. That no, might I, be I the can next say step. it's been, um, I know some of the, uh, even businesses on, uh, on the west side of Manhattan, not to mention other parts of the borough, definitely often, small, do not have a website. And often it's the most iconic ones, which is, you know, like the scarf person or the hat person who has these beautiful products. Um, and just like you were saying before, if you want to shop local and you want to support New York City businesses, I mean, it, it's a great equalizer for, for all these businesses. So, I mean, that's why it's so exciting that you're doing this and promoting it and, and trying to raise so much awareness because they should all uh, get on there and I feel the same way there's so many small businesses that it's hard to convince them but yep. hopefully you know giving them this identity and this opportunity will you know make it a little easier. Obviously Bessie's doing her own public relations but what other kinds of public relations um, are you doing or is the city doing mm -hmm. or is it going through the founders or 
um, et cetera? Now, how is the word getting out? Yeah, so the word is, that's a great question. The word is getting out through different channels. And so right now we're focused on building relationships with organizations and you know, different individuals that have access to these small business communities, which you know is, are the people that should know about .NYC. So we're working with the city um, and the different agencies to promote .NYC. We're working with our founders and their different networks. Um, and we're doing our own promotions on social and in the media. So you'll start seeing it a lot. Does it come up, Ken, at the Hospitality Alliance or the Restaurant Association, or those are the big groups, I yeah, think? Yeah, these, these groups, I think, are doing a great job of just trying to educate everybody on the opportunities, whether they're public policy issues or even marketing or um, branding opportunities. So I think, you know, between Andrew and what's happening at the, at the Restaurant Association themselves, I think they can, you know, be good ambassadors to help get more people signed on. And for a business, it, it's, you know, cumbersome. Like if you just created a .com and now we're telling you to do a .NYC, I mean, even with the Russian Tea Room, we have Russian Tea Room NYC dot com, Russian Tea Room dot com, like the Russian Tea Room, and now Russian Tea Room dot NYC. So now we're in the process of kind of consolidating everything to that just one brand of Russian Tea Room dot NYC. Right. And I think it's going to. And I think that's going to be, you know, for the businesses that you're talking about, the small ones who may or may not have a website. You know, it's even more complicated. But we should, as a city, and and you know, we should work to help all of them get more uh, tech savvy, only because that's how they're going to stay in business. And as somebody who supports the mom and pops with every, you know. Uh, muscle and DNA in my body, this is what I care about, then I would love to, we need to work on this. And I hope that .NYC actually helps. It yeah. could. Sometimes it really see, could. You know, Dwayne Reed .NYC. You know, it really is for unique New York City right. uh, businesses. I think that's what's so exciting about it. That is exciting. And the fact that we have included. Now, it'll be interesting. The exciting part about the business is you're here. You know, you're a business. You've got an address. You're here. Individuals, we'll see what happens in the months that mm -hmm. uh, come up, you know, how people are going to be themselves, dot NYC, and then they move to Seattle. So I'm, what, what's going to happen then? I get all nervous about that. But that's so <laughs> technical. Um, I think it, the real issue for me are the businesses, to be honest with you. That's where we want to make our mark and where I think dot NYC will have the most impact. Um, do you have any sense if it's all across five boroughs that this is happening? Yes, definitely. It's available. The domain is available to the residents of all the five boroughs. Right. So, yeah, and they're using as... it, and it's being mm -hmm. uh, exciting. Yes, okay. definitely. So okay. if you're definitely sign up for your .NYC, and you can do it on our website on www.onet.nyc. Um, there's a search box. You search for your name, and then you'll be directed to different retailers. Unfortunately, we've got to wrap up. But this has been fantastic discussion, and I appreciate all guests taking the time to be here today. Betsy Bober Pollave of Manhattan Sideways, Ken Bibere from the Manhattan Tea Room, and Anna Guzman of New Star. And if you have a question or a concern, feel free to email me at gbrewer at manhattanbpnyc.gov or call us at 212 669-8300. This has been Represent NYC from the studios of Manhattan Neighborhood Network, and I'm Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer. Thank you very much for watching this show.